Right, now I'm going to show you some tools that we will use. This is like a needle nose pair of pliers, it's called an insertion tool. It holds a pin, if I can find you a pin. It will basically hold the back barrel of the pin up to the stopper. And it will make it easy for inserting the pins into the connector. This is the extraction tool. Now this is used obviously if you make a mistake, you'll be able to pop the pin out. In which case you come in from the front of the connector, the pin will go inside and you can push it through and out back out of the back for any mistakes. You need to get all your channels, bend them all back because you're going to obviously start in the middle which are your lower numbers. Each channel should be numbered 1 to 48 and then each pin will go in via a grid. Now you can get this on the 1047 website, uh, tour line. Um, it's pretty well it is industry standard. You will find this in a lot of places, but 1047 is probably your best bet. You want the 150 pin, the 48 channel, and it tells you exactly where to put each pin. For instance, channel one, goes in pins one, two and three. Channels 10, for instance, slightly changed. They go in 20, 30, 31. But it's all pretty self-explanatory. Here I've done a few to get us started. You just want to keep popping the pins, populating them into the connector. So far I'm up to channel 19. This is channel 19 now. Take your pin, pop it into your insertion tool. You can use needle nose pliers, but they're not as good, and when you slip, you snap the pin, so it is advisable to use these. You literally take your pin, I've got a rubber glove which helps, stops to make you saw, you got some sharp bits on the connector. And you literally just get your all, all your holes are numbered as well. So you follow your numbers, following your channels on your your numbers on your channel. You just pop the pins in the right places. Pop the pin in, and then it will it will sit tight, and then it will just pop into place like that. And you just keep doing this and doing this throughout the channels. Again, channel 20. Channel 20 is now in there. Now, as you go, you want to make sure that you've got them in the right place because once it's fully populated, if you've made a mistake in the middle and when you come to test it, you will have problems trying to get them all out. Um, it's not very easy to um, rectify any problems when it's fully populated. Uh, the easiest way to do that if you do have any problems is just to pop all the pins out using your extraction tool. Um, personally I like to keep a heat gun and I warm, I warm these up slightly every now and again. And pop them back just to keep the tension off because some of the wires and some of the channels will get slightly tighter than others. You don't want to heat it up too much though, just literally blow it over with some hot air. You heat it up too much, the jackets can end up melting and they all stick together and that's a total restart. Go along them as well. Have a check, like this one here, it's slightly sticking out too far, so you just want to pop them in a bit. But then once you've done a complete row, check that you know, you've done your plus minus an earth, plus minus earth, plus minus earth, in, just in case you've got like a red and a black round the wrong way and then you populated the rest of the pins, you've suddenly got to try and get in there somehow to change that around when you test it and it tests that wrong. 
you somehow got to get in here, which means that on 150 pin, it's not very easy. You'd end up taking all the pins back out. On 150 pin, the, f the higher up the channels you get as well, the tighter it starts getting. So you can sort of feed it through wires, like as if you were sewing, and it stops it getting so tight. What you don't want to do is go and poke them all in, make getting them all really tight, and then by the time you get to the end, snap the wires out where they where they were too tight to start with. Proof as well, so you have to make sure they're nice and tight. Keep your rubber in the back of your gland. Put it in the chest. What I do and just give it a little push in. Just take any unwanted strain. And there you have it. 150 pin multi pin. Now, same principle for the female, a bit from earlier. Apart from you got an extra ring, the locking ring, which is this part that locks to the mouth. It's the same principle. The connectors are exactly the same, except the numbers are opposite. You wire right to left rather than left to right on the mouth. You want to slide your barrel over like I showed you for the mouth and then put the locking ring over as well before you start. If you don't put that on and you put your connector on that won't fit over and you have to take it all apart. Once that's in the only other thing you need which is different, you've still got your insertion tool, but you need a little pin it's called a guide pin. And if you can see that, all you do is obviously pop that in. Because it's a female, it has a hole on the pins and it makes it a problem for pushing them in. You just use the guide pin to help you, the guide pin pops in first. A bit unprepared, I haven't got a female out. Red one. Take the female. The female pin will fit on the guide pin, like so. And as you pop them in, the guide pin will help poke it through like so, and then the guide pin comes out the other side and you just repeat the process for each wire, for each channel. <laughs>